Learn how to create awesome 3D animations in Blender in just about 10 minutes. Starting by picking your character. You'll need a character that's rigged and ready for animation. So you can head to the Blender Studio website. There'll be a link in the description. And they have a good collection of characters that are professionally modeled and rigged from the open source movies. And a lot of these are available to download for free. Jay here is the one that I'll be using to so go ahead and click on that and click download. But also you could use a character like Rain. I've used that rig before and it's also great. Or Spring, another character from an open source movie that also has a really elaborate rig and is ready for animation. You can go ahead and download any of these models of your choice, open them up Blender and start playing around with them. Then you're probably going to want some movement reference to animate to. So obviously you could just film this yourself, but if you're too lazy to do that or want to animate something that was pretty cool, there's some great reference available on YouTube. For example, I'll use this video, which is 60 basic gymnast tricks that are filmed in slow motion. So it's great for referencing all of those in between frames. The trick from this animation that I'll be referencing for this specific animation is the B-Twist Shurken. Shurken? Shurken. Shurken. B-Twist Shurken. At about approximately 225 in this video. Another a great video to draw reference from for your animations is 50 types of walks. There's uh, some pretty good ones that you can choose here from if you're looking for some simpler animations that aren't as tricksy as the one we're going to do right now. I'll link the videos in the description. So with the character of choice opened in Blender, it's important to get comfortable with the rig and just kind of mess around with all the bones and determine which ones you'll need for your animation. And the other bones that you don't really need to touch are better off to hide. Oftentimes these bones are broken down into different layers that you could just hide as well in your armature settings. So switching to pose mode, we're ready to start animating our J character here. And for starters, we're going to check the automatic keyframe insertion button so we can automatically have keyframes added every time we move a bone without having to press I on the keyboard to manually insert a keyframe. Then we're gonna grab all the important bones for the animation here. That is the main torso bone, the hip bone, and the IK hands and foot bones, the shoulder bone, and then also grab the tracking points for the knees and elbows. Those are those little triangular bones. And that'll be all the bones that we need to focus on for this animation. With all those selected, we're also going to hit the period key and switch to median point instead of individual origins for the rotation. Then we can go ahead and rotate these along the Z axis. Quickly checking our reference video, which is gonna be important. We can find our first pose here and keeping the video open on a separate screen or a tab that you can quickly reference is gonna be important. Prefer to just reference the video Video, instead of copying it directly, you get less stylistic animation doing that ways, and it almost looks a little bit more like motion capture, if that makes sense. But we can see that we're supposed to start with our arms widespread and jumping off of the right foot. And just by grabbing the IK foot controllers and hip bone, we're gonna start blocking out this first pose. So we're using the hip bone, pulling it down a bit, and then grabbing the foot controllers, rotating with the R key, and then double tapping R to spin it in the right rotation. We'll grab the torso to rotate the back down into the right position, grabbing both the left and right hand controllers to get them spread in the right arm movement and then just rotating the hip bone to make sure that everything looks not distorted too weird and comfortable in this pose. As you can see, it's pretty easy to block out the first pose. This is on keyframe one, which is important to remember. And at this point, I find it helpful to split my window and have two different 3D viewports opened for animation. This is up to personal preference, but I like to leave one viewport locked off so I can kind of reference that to my video reference. And then in the top viewport, I can spin around a 3D space to get a better view of things and more easily select some of those different bones for keyframing. And then we're gonna jump back to a YouTube video and using the greater than signs on your keyboard, we can scrub through it frame by frame. Here you'll want to go about five to 10 frames into the video, picking another pose where the character moves, but without moving two different directions, if that makes sense. For example, if you're animating someone's hand waving, you'd want to scrub a few frames until the hand comes to the end of its wave to make sure you have a keyframe there. As long as it's one consistent movement, that's about how far you can scrub in your video reference to go for your next pose. So here we'll pick a frame where our character's in the air, making sure you jump 10 frames forward in your timeline. This is really important to start animating your second frame. Don't worry about the distance between keyframes right now. We'll animate the timing in a little bit. Just make sure you're jumping about 10 frames in the future to keep your keyframes separated. Start with the torso bone as this moves the majority of the character, pulling him up into the air, starting with the left foot and pulling it up into the air. And again, hitting R to rotate and then double tapping R to spin it. Same with the hands, pulling him down into space, bending that torso down a little bit and rotating the hips, quickly blocking out another pose. This actually goes quite quickly and is pretty easy. Scrubbing through, you can see we have our first little bit of animation here. Then jumping another half a dozen frames in the future on our YouTube video, we have our character on the ground. This would be another spot where you need another keyframe. So jumping 10 frames forward on our timeline, we'll block out another pose here. Again, starting with the torso, then the hips, followed by the foot controllers. At this point, you need to start swinging
hanging around those triangular knee pole keyframes to keep the knee pointed in the right direction as he's kind of opening up his hip, animating the hand controllers as well, and then followed by the shoulders. This is where you turn on some of your favorite music and just have some fun blocking out these different frames. Jumping about five frames ahead in our reference video, we're about to take off into this B twist. So jump 10 frames ahead in your timeline and start blocking out the next pose. Again, using those elbow and knee pointers to make sure that the rotation on the shoulder is staying right by pulling them around in front for the knees and then back for the elbows. Here in our reference animation, the hips are opening up and the leg is kicking out. So we're gonna have to make sure to spin that torso bone a lot, rotating the hips with it, and getting the knee controllers and foot controllers swinging all the way around with the hips. It can get to be a little bit of a spaghetti mess if you go too fast, but just take your time and make sure that you kind of unravel your character. Once you twist the spine up, you kind of have to untwist the legs and stuff with it. Here we're coming to the last few frames where the character touches down. Obviously, we need another keyframe in our timeline. As soon as the foot hits the ground, that's going to be a key pose. So in the following keyframes, we're kind of tightening up the rig, and then we'll have them kind of expand a little bit for the final keyframe. For this final keyframe, we're just pulling the torso up a little bit straighter, having the hands kind of come down a little bit and the hips straighten out a little bit. And here you can see we made it to the end of our first phase of animation blocking. If I jump through the different keyframes here, we have pretty much every key pose blocked out. Here we want to just jump through these different keyframes and see if there's any major errors, usually involving the elbow pointers or knee pointers. Here are all of our key poses now. Throughout the jump, we finished with about 10 different frames. Of course, the timing is all currently whacked, but we have the different poses here. We can make the jump taller at this point if we wanted to by grabbing all of the key poses at these different frames and just moving him up a little bit higher. We can make this even more exaggerated than our reference video to make our 3D character just a little bit more awesome than a normal human being. You can use the 3D space grid as reference to make sure that there's no foot sliding at this point. You can tweak these poses all you want, but you don't have to get too carried away either because it's a fast moving animation and with a little bit of motion blur, some of the wonkiness in the in-between frames won't even be noticeable. Trust me, a lot of times the animated films have pretty janky in between frames that just happen really fast and you don't even notice it. But in general, these poses look pretty cool and the next phase is to work on timing. So for this, I'm gonna switch our lower window over to the dope sheet animation editor. So scrolling to the top and clicking the top upmost keyframe in a stack of keyframes, it'll select all of the keyframes on that frame. So I'm gonna grab the first keyframe here on frame 10 that we added and pull it all the way into about frame four. We want this first little jump to happen pretty fast. Then I'll grab the keyframe on frame 20 and pull this all the way into maybe frame 10. And then I'll quickly just play this back and forth until we get a natural little hop here. Once the timing is pretty good, you can grab the next keyframes in your stack and start pulling them in pretty tight. Again, constantly playing it back then to feel what's natural. For the takeoff, we obviously need a lot of velocity, so we want these to be pretty tight together for some fast moving motion. That's looking pretty good for an initial jump, so I'll grab the next keyframe and pull it in. This one we can leave a little bit more space because he's traveling a good amount of distance at this point. And just continuing the same process, tightening all the keyframes, playing back that little bit of animation till we find a natural amount of movement. When it's all said and done, we condensed our keyframes from about 100 frames down to about 55. That's looking pretty good, but you might notice there's a bit of a floaty movement still to the character. And that's because all of our keyframes have curves connecting them, which kind of will smooth out motion. Usually it looks good, but for certain things, it won't look good. Like something landing on the ground and you want to come to an immediate stop instead of looking like it kind of lands and slowly comes to a stop. So this will be the next stage in our animation process, adding some physics. So we're done with the dope sheet for now, and we're gonna switch the dope sheet over to the animation graph editor. Here you'll want to adjust your window by grabbing the sliders on the bottom and the right hand side of the window to have these graph lines sort of fit nicely in the window. We'll start by grabbing the foot that touches down on the ground first. Now you can see we have a lot of different graphs here and it's a little hairy looking but we don't need to be adjusting most of these so just click the little drop down on that foot controller and we'll turn off the visibility on all the rotation and the X location as well. We really only need to work on the Z location and maybe the Y location. So scaling our window here by adjusting the slider along the right hand side there, you can see the path we have along the Z axis for this foot. And you can see how the curve kind of comes to a gradual flat stop at the end of that keyframe. Not what we want. We want it to come to an immediate stop. So on that keyframe, grab that handle and then on the left hand side, we'll tighten it all the way down to a sharp point. Then jumping to the previous keyframe, we can pull this up 
up a little bit more. So our slope is sort of coming down to a sharp halt. You can see just by doing this alone, our character has a little bit more impact on the ground now. We'll switch to the Y location as well and sharpen up that keyframe where the foot hits the ground as well. You can go ahead then and do the same thing on the hip controller and the torso controller as well. And then also you might want to jump to the beginning of the jump where the character first thrusts his feet off the ground and have this happen at a sharp incline as well by scaling those handles down nice and tight to a point. So instead of floating off the ground, he is forcefully leaving the ground, if that makes sense. These little bit of physics adjustments add quite a bit to the final animation. But once you're happy with your timing and your pacing, you're basically finished. Just enable some motion blur in the render settings and start playing back the animation in your timeline. That's looking pretty cool. And this is actually a fairly complex animation. Basically, an animation is never really finished. At one point, you just decide to stop tweaking it. But this animation in total took less than an hour to put together. And as you can see, it's looking pretty cool. If you do create something cool, upload it on the internet and tag CG Geek because I love to see what you guys create. But I'll do it for me, guys. This has been a lot of fun. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and keep on animating. I'll see you in a future video. Bye-bye.